Removing and Replacing Parts Omen by HP 40L Gaming Desktop PC How to Replace the Feet Removal Remove the rubber component from the front foot. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the front foot to the bottom of the chassis. Remove the front foot. The back foot is removed in the same manner. Replacement. Place the front foot into position on the bottom of the chassis. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the front foot to the bottom of the chassis. Replace the rubber component to the front foot. The back foot is replaced in the same manner. How to replace the PSU dust filter. Removal. Remove the PSU dust filter from its magnetic attachment to the bottom of the chassis. Remove the PSU dust filter. Replacement. Place the PSU dust filter over its cutout on the bottom of the chassis until it secures magnetically. How to replace the left access panel. Removal. Press the internal access release button on the top of the unit to release the top of the left access panel. Note, the panel will remain ajar without additional support. Grasp the left access panel on either side at the top and push it slightly forward from its open position. Lift the left access panel up and away from the unit and remove. Replacement. Grasp the left access panel on either side at the top and align the guide at the bottom of the panel with the bottom edge of the chassis. Sit the guide of the left access panel onto the chassis and push it close until the metal tabs at the top of the panel click into position. How to replace the right access panel. Removal. Note, in the event of a damaged right side access panel, the panel should be ordered with the chassis. Press the internal access release button on top of the unit to release the top of the right access panel. Note, the panel will remain ajar without additional support. Grasp the right access panel on either side of the top and push it slightly forward from its open position. Lift the right access panel up and away from the unit. Replacement. Grasp the right access panel on either side of the top and align the guide at the bottom of the panel with the bottom edge of the chassis. Sit the guide of the right access panel onto the chassis and push it closed until the metal tabs at the top of the panel have clicked into position. How to replace the system memory. Before you begin, remove the left access panel. Removal. Simultaneously push down the retaining lever located on each side of the memory slot to release the memory module. Pull the memory module out of the memory slot. 
the second memory module is removed in the same manner. Note, some configurations of this PC have up to four memory modules. Replacement. Align the small notch on the bottom of the memory module with the key in the memory slot on the motherboard. Press the memory module into the memory slot until the retaining levers snap into position over the sides of the module. The second memory module is replaced in the same manner. How to replace the graphics card. Before you begin, remove the left access panel and right access panel. Removal. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card bracket to the side chassis. Slide the graphics card bracket to the right until the retention screw unhooks. Remove the graphics card bracket and set it aside for later replacement. Grasp and squeeze the sides of the graphics card power cable to unclip it and disconnect the power cable from its connector on the graphics card. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the graphics card to the top of the expansion slot on the rear of the chassis. The number of screws to remove depends on the graphics card. Push down the retaining lever on the expansion slot on the motherboard. Grasp the top of the graphics card on either side and gently move it from side to side before lifting it from the expansion slot. Remove the graphics card. Replacement. Align the golden fingers on the graphics card with the expansion slot on the motherboard. Place the graphics card into the expansion slot and using minimal force, press down until the retaining lever clicks into place. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secures the graphics card to the top of the expansion slot on the rear of the chassis. Reconnect the power cable to its connector on the graphics card. Place the graphics card bracket over its retention screw and slide it slightly to the left. Lift the unit up a bit and grasp the slider on the right side of the panel. While holding the slider located on the right side of the access panel, slide the graphics card until the retention screw is securely latched. Slide the graphics card bracket towards the graphics card and replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure it to the side chassis. How to replace the M.2 solid state drive. Before you begin, remove the left access panel and graphics card. Removal. Remove the single P1 Phillips head screw to release the M.2 solid state drive to the spring tension position. Note, due to the thermal pad located underneath the M.2 solid state drive, you will need to lift the M.2 solid state drive to its spring tension resting position. 
pull the M.2 solid state drive out of its slot on the motherboard and remove. Replacement Align the notch on the M.2 solid state drive with the key in its slot on the motherboard. At an angle, insert the M.2 solid state drive into its slot on the motherboard. Press down on the M.2 solid state drive and replace the single P1 Phillips head screw to secure the drive to the motherboard. How to replace the wireless LAN module. Before you begin, remove the left access panel and graphics card. Removal. Caution, use care when disconnecting the wireless LAN antenna cables from the wireless LAN module. A damaged cable or connector can degrade desktop performance. Grasp the wireless LAN antenna connectors with a small pair of needle nose pliers or tweezers and carefully detach the wireless LAN antenna cables from the wireless LAN module. Remove the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the wireless LAN module to the motherboard and allow it to rise to the spring tension position. Grasp the wireless LAN module by the edges and pull gently to remove it. Replacement Align the notch on the wireless LAN module with the key in the wireless LAN module slot on the motherboard. At an angle, insert the wireless LAN module into its slot on the motherboard. Replace the P1 Phillips head screw to secure it to the motherboard. Caution. Use care when connecting the wireless antenna cables to the wireless module. A damaged cable or connector can degrade the PC's performance. Carefully reconnect the wireless antenna cables to the wireless LAN module. How to replace the LED lighting bar. Before you begin, remove the left access panel and right access panel. Removal. Disconnect the LED lighting bar connector on the lighting control module. Unclip the cable clip. Feed the LED lighting bar connector cable out through the access hole at the top of the side chassis. Turn the unit around so that the left side of the chassis is facing you. Turn the unit upside down. Remove the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the LED lighting bar to the top chassis. Remove the LED lighting bar. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips, hooks, and tape that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. 
It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. Turn the unit upside down. Place the LED lighting bar in position beneath the left edge of the top chassis and align the screw hole. Replace the P1 Phillips head screw that secures the LED lighting bar to the top chassis. Stand the unit upright with the left side of the chassis facing you. Thread the LED lighting bar connector cable out through the access hole at the top of the side chassis. Turn the unit so that the right side of the chassis is facing you. Reconnect the LED lighting bar connector cable to its connector on the lighting control module. Place the cable into the cable clip and secure the cable clip. How to replace the rear system fan, AMD. Before you begin, remove the left access panel. Removal. Disconnect the rear fan's power connector from the motherboard. Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the rear system fan behind the vent in the rear chassis. Lift the fan up and out of the chassis to remove it. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips and hooks that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. Cable ties are also recommended for use to ensure that the cables are routed and secured. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement With the fan's branding facing towards the vent, align the rear system fan with the four screw holes on the rear chassis. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the rear system fan behind the vent in the rear chassis. Reconnect the power connector to the motherboard. How to replace the liquid cooling system, Intel. Before you begin, remove the left access panel and right access panel. Removal. Disconnect the CPU pump's LED lighting cable from its connector on the lighting control module. Remove the cable tie to release the CPU pump's LED lighting cable. Carefully remove the CPU pump's LED lighting cable by threading the cable through the hole on the top left side of the chassis. Turn the unit so that the rear is facing you. 
lie the unit down on its right side. Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the liquid cooling system radiator fan to the rear of the unit. Disconnect the pump connector from the motherboard. Lift the liquid cooling system fan slightly out of the unit and disconnect the fan connector from the motherboard. Note, make sure to thread the liquid cooling system fan connector's excess cable through the hole on the top left side of the chassis. Loosen the four captive P1 Phillips head screws that secure the pump over the CPU. Note, because the screws are spring-loaded, there is no specific order of removal. Carefully pull the liquid cooling system out of the PC and remove. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips and hooks that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. Cable ties are also recommended for use to ensure that the cables are routed and secured. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. Note, before replacing the liquid cooling system, the thermal grease should be replaced. The thermal grease should be replaced every time the liquid cooling system is removed. Use alcohol in a soft cloth or an alcohol swab to clean all thermal grease off of the CPU pump and processor. Use the thermal grease applicator to apply thermal grease to the processor. Place the CPU pump over the CPU and align the four captive screws to the corresponding screw pillars on the motherboard. Tighten the four captive P1 Phillips head screws that secure the pump over the CPU. Lift the liquid cooling system fan slightly out of the unit. And reconnect the liquid cooling system fan's cable to its connector on the motherboard. Reconnect the pump connector cable to its connector on the motherboard. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the liquid cooling system fan and radiator to the rear of the unit. Stand the unit upright so that the left side is facing you. Thread the excess liquid cooling system fan's cable and the CPU pump's LED lighting cable through the hole at the top left side of the chassis. Reconnect the CPU pump's LED lighting cable to its connector on the lighting control board. Replace the cable tie that secures the CPU pump's LED lighting cable.
How to Replace the Liquid Cooling System Fan, Intel Before you begin, remove the left access panel, right access panel, front bezel, top bezel, and liquid cooling system. Removal Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the liquid cooling system fan to the radiator. Remove the liquid cooling system fan. Replacement. Place the liquid cooling system fan into position over the radiator. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the liquid cooling system fan to the radiator. How to Replace the System Fan, AMD Before you begin, remove the left access panel and right access panel. Removal Disconnect the system fan cable from its connector on the motherboard. Turn the unit around so that the right side of the chassis is facing you. Disconnect the system fan's LED lighting cable from its connector on the lighting control module. Remove the cable tie to release the system fan's LED lighting cable. Carefully remove the system fan's LED lighting cable by threading the cable through the hole on the top left side of the chassis. Turn the unit around so that the left side of the chassis is facing you. Lie the unit down on its right side. Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the system fan to the heatsink. Remove the system fan. Replacement Place the system fan into position over the heatsink. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the system fan to the heatsink. Reconnect the system fan cable to its connector on the motherboard. Stand the unit upright with the left side of the chassis facing you. Thread the system fan's LED lighting cable through the hole at the top left side of the chassis. Turn the unit around so that the right side of the chassis is facing you. Reconnect the system fan's LED lighting cable to its connector on the lighting control module. Replace the cable tie that secures the system fan's LED lighting cable. How to Replace the Heatsink, AMD Before you begin, remove the left access panel and system fan. Removal Loosen the four P1 Phillips head spring-loaded captive screws that secure each corner of the heatsink to the screw pillars on the motherboard. Note, because the screws are spring-loaded, there is no specific order of removal. 
Lift the heat sink off of the CPU and up and out of the chassis to remove it. Replacement Note, before replacing the heat sink, the thermal grease should be replaced. The thermal grease should be replaced every time the heat sink is removed. Use alcohol in a soft cloth or an alcohol swab to clean all thermal grease off of the heat sink and processor. Use the thermal grease applicator to apply thermal grease to the processor. Place the heat sink over the CPU and align the four captive screws to the corresponding screw pillars on the motherboard. Tighten the four P1 Phillips head spring-loaded captive screws that secure each corner of the heat sink to the motherboard. How to replace the CPU, AMD. Before you begin, remove the left access panel, system fan, and heat sink. Removal. Gently press down the CPU load lever, then push it to the side and up, away from the CPU socket, until it is disengaged. Grasp the edges of the CPU and carefully remove it from its socket. Replacement Note, identify the golden triangle on the corner of the chip assembly and the triangle on the socket on the motherboard by the mark on the corner of the socket stencil. Hold the CPU over its socket in the motherboard and align the golden triangle at the corner with the corresponding triangle marked on the motherboard. Place the CPU into its socket on the motherboard. Push the CPU load lever down and then sideways to secure the CPU. How to replace the CPU, Intel. Before you begin, remove the left access panel and liquid cooling system. Removal. Gently press down the CPU load lever and then push it to the side, away from the CPU socket, to allow it to rise to the spring-loaded position. Lift the CPU bracket up and away from the CPU. Grasp the edges of the CPU and carefully remove it from its socket. Replacement Note, identify the golden triangle on the bottom left corner of the chip assembly. Hold the CPU over its socket in the motherboard and align the golden triangle at the bottom left corner. Place the CPU into its socket on the motherboard. Push the CPU bracket down and over the CPU. Push the CPU load lever down and then sideways to secure the CPU. How to Replace the Motherboard AMD Before you begin, remove the left access panel, system memory, graphics card, M.2 solid-state drive, wireless LAN module, system fan, heatsink, and CPU. Removal Note, the motherboard in this video may look slightly different than similar models but the removal and replacement procedure is the same. Disconnect the following from the motherboard. Top I.O. audio cable. Rear system fan cable. Two four-pin power cables. Power button cable. Second front RGB fan cable. 24-pin power cable. Front I.O. USB 2.0 cable. 
Front I.O. USB 3.2 Cable First Front RGB Fan Cable Lighting Control Module Cable Power LED Cable and Hard Drive SATA Cable Restore the CMOS factory settings first before replacing the system motherboard. To do so, remove the battery from the motherboard. Wait 30 seconds. Replace the battery to the motherboard. CMOS factory settings are now reset. You will now need to enter system BIOS and reset the clock in BIOS after this procedure. Remove the eight P1 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard to the side chassis. Lift the motherboard out from the I.O. panel in the rear and off of its alignment pins on the side chassis. Remove the motherboard. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips and hooks that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. Cable ties are also recommended for use to ensure that the cables are routed and secured. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Grasp the motherboard on either side and tow the rear I.O. connectors into the rear I.O. panel until the motherboard sits snugly in place. Note, take care not to trap any of the cables under the motherboard. Replace the eight P1 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard to the side panel. Reconnect the following to the motherboard. Top I.O. audio cable. Rear system fan cable. Two four pin power cables. Power button cable. Second front RGB fan cable. 24 pin power cable. Front IO USB 2.0 cable. Front IO USB 3.2 cable. First front RGB fan cable. Lighting control module cable. Power LED cable. And hard drive SATA cable. How to Replace the Motherboard Intel Before you begin, remove the left access panel, system memory, graphics card, M.2 solid-state drive, wireless LAN module, liquid cooling system, and CPU. Note, depending on the configuration or model of the desktop, some of the cables may not be included. Removal Disconnect the following cables. Front I.O. audio cable. Two four-pin power cables. Power button cable. Second front RGB fan cable. 24-pin power cable. Front I.O. USB 2.0 cable. Front I.O. USB 3.2 cable. First front RGB fan cable. 10-pin LED lighting control module cable. 
2-pin power LED cable, hard drive SATA cable. Restore the CMOS factory settings first before replacing the system motherboard. To do so, remove the battery from the motherboard. Wait 30 seconds. Replace the battery to the motherboard. CMOS factory settings are now reset. Note, you will now need to enter system BIOS and reset the clock in BIOS after this procedure. Remove the eight P1 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard to the side chassis. Lift the motherboard out from the I.O. panel in the rear and off of its alignment pins on the side chassis. Remove the motherboard. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips and hooks that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. Cable ties are also recommended for use to ensure that the cables are routed and secured. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Grasp the motherboard on either side and tow the rear I.O. connectors into the rear I.O. panel while ensuring there are no cables trapped underneath the motherboard. Press down gently until the motherboard sits snugly in place. Replace the eight P1 Phillips head screws that secure the motherboard to the side chassis. Reconnect the following cables to the motherboard. Front I.O. audio cable. Two four-pin power cables. Power button cable. Second front RGB fan cable. 24-pin power cable. Front I.O. USB 2.0 cable. Front I.O. USB 3.2 cable. First front RGB fan cable. 10-pin LED lighting control module cable. Two-pin power LED cable. Hard drive SATA cable. How to replace the lighting control module. Before you begin, remove the right access panel. Removal. Disconnect the following connectors from the lighting control module. System fan LED cable. Lighting control module cable. CN1 lighting signal controller. Logo LED cable. Lighting bar cable. First front RGB fan cable. Second front RGB fan cable. HDD SATA power connector. Note. The connectors do not need to be removed in any particular order. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the lighting control module to the side chassis. Grasp the lighting control module by the edges and lift it out to remove it. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips and hooks that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. Cable ties are also recommended for use to ensure that the cables are routed and secured. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. 
It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components, should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Align the screw holes on the lighting control module with the two screw sinks on the side chassis. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the lighting control module to the side chassis. Reconnect the following cables to the lighting control module. System fan LED cable. Lighting control module cable. CN1 lighting signal controller. Logo LED cable. Lighting bar cable. First front fan LED cable. Second front fan LED cable. HDD SATA power connector. How to replace the hard drive. Before you begin, remove the right access panel. Removal. Disconnect the hard drive power cable and the SATA cable from the hard drive. Push the two plastic tabs on the sides of the hard drive holder towards each other to flex the holder. Keeping the hard drive holder flexed, Slide the holder and the hard drive out of the hard drive cage. Note, the secondary hard drive holder adjacent to the hard drive is removed in the same way. Grasp the holder on either side and flex it to remove the hard drive from the holder. Remove the hard drive and place the holder aside for later replacement. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips and hooks that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. Cable ties are also recommended for use to ensure that the cables are routed and secured. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Align the grommet pins on one side of the hard drive holder to the holes on one side of the hard drive. Insert the grommet pins into one side of the hard drive. Flex the holder to insert the grommet pins into the other side of the hard drive. Slide the hard drive and its holder into the hard drive cage. Connect the SATA cable and power cable to the hard drive. How to replace the power supply. Before you begin, remove the left access panel, right access panel, graphics card, and liquid cooling system for Intel configurations. Removal. Note, removing and replacing the power supply requires a significant amount of handling of the various cables, cable clips, and cable ties. Be sure to work carefully with these components to avoid any tangling of the cables. Disconnect the two four-pin power connectors from the motherboard. Disconnect the 24-pin power connector from the motherboard. Stand the unit upright. Feed the three sets of power connector cables through their respective access holes on the side of the chassis.
Turn the unit around so that the right side of the chassis is facing you. Disconnect the SATA hard drive power connector from the hard drive and remove the cables from their routing channel along the hard drive's cage. Disconnect the SATA power connector from the lighting control module. Turn the unit so that the rear of the chassis is facing you. Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the power supply to the rear chassis. Caution. Make sure to support the power supply bracket while removing its screws. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws from the bracket that secures the power supply. Remove the power supply bracket. Remove all the cable ties that secure the power connector cables. Detach the power connector cables from the cable guide. Caution! Before removing the power supply, make sure there are no other cables tangled with the power supply cables. Remove the power supply. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips and hooks that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. Cable ties are also recommended for use to ensure that the cables are routed and secured. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Slide the power supply into its position on the bottom chassis. Attach the power connector cables to the clips on the cable guide. Replace the cable ties that secure the power connector cables. Place the power supply bracket into position. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the power supply bracket to the right side of the chassis. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the power supply to the rear chassis. Reconnect the SATA power connector to the lighting control module. Reconnect the SATA hard drive power connector to the hard drive and route it along its routing channel on the hard drive's cage. Thread the three sets of power connector cables through their respective access holes on the side of the chassis.
lie the unit down on its right side so that you have access to the left side of the chassis. Reconnect the 24-pin power connector to the motherboard. Reconnect the two 4-pin power connectors to the motherboard. How to replace the front bezel. Removal. Simultaneously press the release buttons on both sides of the front bezel and pull it away from the unit. Move your hands towards the center of the front bezel and pull gently to remove the bottom hooks from their clips. Remove the front bezel. Replacement. Align the hooks on the bottom of the front bezel to the clips on the bottom edge of the front compartment. Push gently towards the unit until the top clicks into place. How to replace the RGB logo module. Before you begin, remove the front bezel. Removal. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the RGB logo module to the front bezel. Disconnect the RGB logo module pogo pin connector cable from the RGB logo module. Remove the RGB logo module. Replacement. Connect the RGB logo module pogo pin connector cable to the RGB logo module. Place the RGB logo module into position over its screw wells on the front bezel. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secures the RGB logo module to the front bezel. How to replace the top bezel. Before you begin, remove the front bezel. Removal. Using minimal force, slide the top bezel forward, away from the rear of the unit. Lift off the top bezel and remove it. Replacement. Place the top bezel on top of the chassis with the front edge sitting a little forward. Using minimal force, push the top bezel backwards until the retaining tabs click into place. How to replace the RGB logo module pogo pin connectors. Before you begin, remove the left access panel, right access panel, front bezel, RGB logo module, and top bezel. Removal. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the RGB logo module pogo pin connector bracket to the front bezel. Remove the RGB logo module pogo pin connector bracket. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the RGB logo module pogo pin connector to the front bezel. Lift the RGB logo module pogo pin connector out of its cutout on the front bezel and cautiously thread the cable through its access hole. Disconnect the RGB logo module pogo pin connector cable from the lighting control module. Unclip the cable clip and remove the RGB logo module pogo pin connector cable. 
Thread the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector Cable through the access hole at the top left-hand side of the chassis. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector to the bracket on top of the chassis. Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the bracket to the top of the chassis. Remove the bracket. Pull the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector away from the chassis and gently thread the cable out. Remove the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connectors. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips and hooks that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. Cable ties are also recommended for use to ensure that the cables are routed and secured. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Thread the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector Cable through its access hole on the top of the chassis. Place the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector onto the top of the chassis. Place the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector Bracket over the module on the top of the chassis. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector Bracket to the top of the chassis. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector to the bracket. Turn the unit so that the left side of the chassis is facing you. Thread the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector Cable through the access hole on the top right side of the chassis. Turn the unit so that the right side of the chassis is facing you. Connect the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector to the Lighting Control Module. Place the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector Cable into the cable clip. Secure the cable clip. Thread the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector Cable through its access hole on the front bezel and place it over its screw wells on the front bezel. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secures the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector to the front bezel. Place the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector Bracket in position over its screw wells on the front bezel. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the RGB Logo Module Pogo Pin Connector Bracket to the front bezel. How to replace the dust filter. Before you begin, remove the front bezel. Removal. Grasp the handle at the top of the dust filter and pull gently until it clears the front of the chassis. Remove the dust filter. Replacement. 
align the hooks on the bottom of the dust filter to the bottom edge at the front of the chassis. Push gently towards the unit until the top clips attach securely. How to replace the front RGB fans. Before you begin, remove the left access panel, right access panel, front bezel, and dust filter. Removal. Disconnect the front RGB fan power cable from its connector on the motherboard and unhook the cable from its clip to remove the RGB fan power cable. Thread the RGB fan power cable through the access hole on the side of the chassis. Turn the unit so that the right side of the chassis is facing you. Disconnect the RGB fan lighting cable from its connector on the lighting control module. Unclip the cable clip and remove the RGB fan lighting cable. Remove the RGB fan lighting cable from the second cable tie. Turn the unit so that the front of the chassis is facing you. Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the first front RGB fan to the front of the chassis. Remove the fan by threading the LED lighting cable and front RGB fan power cable through the hole on the lower right side of the chassis. The second front fan is removed in the same manner. Note, the second front RGB fan screws are located in the interior of the chassis, and the screws are shorter than those removed for the first front RGB fan. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips and hooks that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. Cable ties are also recommended for use to ensure that the cables are routed and secured. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Thread the front RGB fan lighting and power cable through the hole on the lower right side of the chassis. While supporting the front RGB fan, replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the front RGB fan to the front chassis. Turn the unit so that the right side of the chassis is facing you. Connect the RGB fan lighting cable to its connector on the lighting control module. Thread the RGB fan lighting cable through the cable clip and secure the clip. Thread the RGB fan lighting cable through the second cable tie. Thread the front RGB fan power cable through the access hole on the side of the chassis. Turn the unit so that the left side of the chassis is facing you. Reconnect the front RGB fan power cable to its connector on the motherboard 
and secure the cable behind the cable clip. The second front RGB fan is replaced in the same manner. How to replace the top I.O. module. Before you begin, remove the left access panel, right access panel, graphics card, liquid cooling system for Intel configurations, rear system fan for AMD configurations, front bezel, and top bezel. Removal. Disconnect the following cables from the motherboard. Audio connector cable. Power button connector cable. USB 2.0 connector cable. USB 3.2 connector cable. Thread the four sets of cables through their access holes. Turn the unit around so that the right side of the chassis is facing you. Remove the audio connector cable from its cable tie. Unclip the cable clip and remove the power button, USB 2.0 and USB 3.2 cables from the cable clip. Remove the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the top I.O. module to the top I.O. bracket. Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the top I.O. bracket to the top of the chassis. Remove the top I.O. bracket. Lift the front I.O. module away from the top chassis taking care to thread the attached cables one by one through the access hole in the side chassis. Remove the front I.O. module. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips and hooks that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. Cable ties are also recommended for use to ensure that the cables are routed and secured. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement Carefully thread the attached connector cables one by one through the access hole in the side chassis adjacent to the front I.O. module. Place the front I.O. module over the front I.O. module bracket on the top of the chassis. Replace the three P1 Phillips head screws that secure the top I.O. module to the top I.O. bracket. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the top I.O. bracket to the top of the chassis. Turn the unit so that the right side of the chassis is facing you. Replace the cable tie that secures the audio connector cable. Thread the power button, USB 2.0 and USB 3.2 cables through the cable clip and secure the clip.
Thread the four sets of cables through their access holes. Turn the unit around and lie it down on its right side. Reconnect the following cables to the motherboard. Audio connector cable. Power button connector cable. USB 2.0 connector cable. USB 3.2 connector cable. How to replace the wireless LAN antennas. Before you begin, remove the left access panel, right access panel, system memory, graphics card, M.2 solid state drive, wireless LAN module, system fan and heat sink or liquid cooling system, CPU, motherboard, front bezel, and top bezel. Removal. Caution. Use care when disconnecting the wireless LAN antenna cables from the wireless LAN module. A damaged cable or connector can degrade desktop performance. Thread the wireless LAN antenna cables through their access hole on the side of the chassis. Turn the unit around so that the right side of the chassis is facing you. Remove the two sets of cable ties that secure the wireless LAN antenna cables to the side of the chassis. Feed the wireless LAN antenna cables through the top right side of the chassis. Gently prise the first wireless LAN antenna bracket to which the wireless LAN antenna cable is attached off of the top chassis and remove the wireless LAN antenna. The second wireless LAN antenna bracket and cable is removed in the same manner. As you complete the replacement of a part for the desktop, you should ensure that all of the cables are correctly routed. The interior of the system should never look like this after a service event. As you route any cables that you've connected back into position, be sure to use the clips and hooks that are provided on the chassis for this purpose. Cable ties are also recommended for use to ensure that the cables are routed and secured. This prevents the possibility of cables snagging or sagging when the desktop is moved. It also helps ensure clear sight and access to the components should any further troubleshooting or servicing be needed. Replacement. Align the tab on the bracket of the main wireless LAN antenna with the slot on the top of the chassis and push the bracket down firmly. Feed the wireless LAN antenna cable through its access hole on the top of the unit. The second wireless LAN antenna is fixed in the same manner. Turn the unit so that the left side of the chassis is facing you. Feed the wireless LAN antenna cables through the access hole on the top left side of the chassis. Turn the unit so that the right side of the chassis is facing you. Replace the two cable ties that secure the wireless LAN antennas to the side of the chassis. Thread the wireless LAN antenna cables through their access hole.
How to Replace the Latch Sets Before you begin, remove the left access panel and right access panel. Removal Remove the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the left latch slider. Remove the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the latch button to the top left edge of the chassis. Unhook the left latch slider from its slots by sliding it to the left and lifting it off of the left side of the chassis. Unhook the spring from its holder on the left latch slider. Remove the left latch set. Remove the spring from the left side of the chassis. The right latch set is removed in the same manner. Replacement Hook the spring to its holder on the left side of the chassis. Hook the spring to its holder on the latch slider. Gently pull the latch slider to the left and apply force to clip the latch slider to the side of the left edge. Replace the two P1 Phillips head screws that secure the latch button to the top left edge of the chassis. Replace the four P1 Phillips head screws that secure the left latch slider to the left side of the chassis. The right latch is replaced in the same manner. Click the Playlist tab in YouTube to find HP videos in other languages, and search our channel to find official HP support videos.